Will I have to put black tape on every camera if I use Holga 400 film? I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Tri-X represented here in blue, Holga in red. While we do have a higher base fog, we can see on the chart, the rest of the line actually follows the Tri-X pretty darn close, close enough that we should get a fairly good equal performance. It deviates up at the top where we start to shoulder a little bit in the highlights, where Tri-X just keeps on going on its straight line, but through the majority of it, it follows very, very closely. The toes are a little bit different. We do have a slightly flatter toe on the Holga, but once we get past those first uh, couple stops of density, uh, they track pretty close. So we may have a little less separation in the deep shadows uh, going up into from your zone ones to two, but beyond that, pretty pretty close with the triax. So let's go ahead and look at the print and see how that bears out. Here we have our triax 400 and our Holga 400. So immediate impression, smoother skin tones, slightly darker shirt, 
and an extended red sensitivity. At a 400 speed film, however, I got my minimum shadow density at about 200, so a full stop slower. This seems vaguely familiar. I believe it was FOMA 400 that gave us smoother skin tones and a darker shirt because of the extended red sen sensitivity at about a 200 speed film. That came out at 250, but we're only talking about a third of a stop. So is this FOMA 400 repackaged? Very likely, but not confirmed. However, we're going to go ahead and treat this as its own film, and we're going to go ahead and look closer at the grain and other fine details to see what differences there are between our vanilla print and our other film. So while I greatly suspect this is repackaged FOMA, we're going to go ahead and treat this separately. So let's zoom in and see what the close-up details look like, but keep all these other three points in mind. Here when we look at our first impression of the grain, it is a larger grain than Tri-X, even though it is technically a 400 speed film. Although, as I said, I got it to 200, which means it's very large grain for a 200 speed film. The gradation from shadow to mid-tone of my skin is not bad, it's pretty good. Uh, we have some nice sharp details and here on the edge of my shoulder where it fades into the background, we can see little fuzzies of the fabric. So we are retaining quite a bit of good detail, even though the grain is quite pronounced. Here with the collar of my shirt and the seam along the shoulder, we are getting nice sharp detail. It is not obscured by the grain and we can even see the texture of the fabric of the smooth portion of the shirt. So the grain, while pronounced is not obscuring detail like we have seen with some other films. So fairly good performance in all those respects. Let's go ahead and look closer at the majority of skin tone and see how that extended red sensitivity compares to a standard panchromatic. And here we go. Nice, good, smooth tonality in the skin. We have good detail in the pores and wrinkles of my skin in the fine hairs of my luscious eyebrows. <laughs> and if we uh, look at just how the red in my skin is rendered, we can see it is lighter, just as we saw with the FOMA 400 and with Acros 2, uh, the 100 speed film, and a few others. So overall, a very good performance. Are there differences? Absolutely. If you're going to shoot this film for portraits, it's going to render Caucasian skin tone at least very, very nicely. Any skin that has quite a bit of red in it, it's going to look good. If you're going to photograph landscapes, expect your reds to be lighter, your cyans like sky to be a little bit darker. So that's pretty much it for this film. Thank you for watching. If you would like to support this channel, you can get shirts, t-shirts, and prints from the links down in the description. You can join the Discord server that has been set up for me by one of the fans. And that is not behind a paywall, so feel free to join that if you want to join any additional discussion about the topics we cover. Otherwise, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we will see you next time.